So descriptive statistics, yes. So this is one of the first things as well that you do to just start to un understand your data, okay? Is, is uh, you go to analyze descriptive statistics. Now here you have many options, uh, but at, at the first go, I want you to consider either frequencies for your categorical variables, and those are those ordinal variables you see there, like the Likert scale ones, you want frequencies for those. Descriptive statistics are more for your scale variables like age. If age had been an open-ended response and people entered their numbers or test scores is another one, you get descriptive statistics and things like that. So we select um, frequencies because it appears all of our var variables here are actually ordinal. And I'll just take all of them and bring them here and I'll say paste again, and now it's here, and I will select that and press play, and boom, I have my, my, uh, my frequencies. And I can start to understand my data in terms of the extra hours of schoolwork that people tend to do. More than 10 hours, ooh, a large, large percentage are, are doing a lot of work outside of uh, their regular schoolwork. Um, I mean, uh, in, in terms of the extra hours, in terms of counseling services, uh, actually a, a high percentage are, are seeking counseling services at school. Uh, I, I can see some of the percentages of people in the different depression uh, areas as well. And I can begin to report those. And so, so one, one thing you could do when you're displaying some of your, uh, your, the, the um, descriptives is you can either create tables or you can create charts, interesting charts. And so I will just uh, show you real quick um, some charts and how kind of I like to do it. So let me go ahead and open a blank worksheet for this. Okay, so I have my output and I have my uh, depression areas. Actually, it starts here, okay? And I want to take that, for example, and I'll copy that and paste it, and I'll unmerge those cells because they come in merged. And you wanna take your valid percents, you want to leave those. And I took valid percent as opposed to percent because you'll see percent includes missing values. So here I don't have any missing values, but when I do in uh, percents usually include that, but valid percent just counts, you know, the, the, the responses that were provided. So I will, I will do that. And then I will just bring in these labels to where they belong here. And I will, bring these up here. Essentially what I'm trying to do here is to create one table as opposed to many tables for each depression related question. I'm making one giant table for all of the depression areas. And, and I'll keep doing this for all of them. And then once I have them all, I can select all of the data and insert and make some stacked bar charts like right here. And now I can, I can add some data labels in the center so that I have my data in there, decrease those decimals and uh, format the percents because currently, as you can see, it's just numbers without percentages. So there's, um, Excel doesn't have a straightforward way to to do that quite yet so i have a little hack that i do which is to put that line and a percent um after the zeros where the option has a red in between and when i do that and say okay boom those percentages are in and i can start to say oh you know in the areas um actually in this case there's not very much variability they're all pretty similar but uh, let's see something like feeling down or depressed a larger percentage say very low frequency than others okay so for this particular chart it's not super insightful again because this is all totally made up data but in your data set you might find some really clear 
and interesting differences where you can start to describe your data set in terms of, you know, what's high, what's low, what are the patterns there? And that's really still just part of descriptive statistics and understanding your data. Some other, uh, you can also do descriptives. You don't have to do uh, frequencies for categorical variables. You can do descriptives. So, so for sense of belonging, uh, for example, we have these questions, sense of belonging and autonomy. We have up to here and I can take those and I can say, uh, these are descriptives this time and I'll say paste and I will go to my syntax file and now I'll run those descriptives, press play. And now I have means for the different uh, items for sense of belonging and autonomy. And I'll go into my Excel and I like to label my stuff. Really it's, it's key to keep track of these things so you can retrace your steps if you need to. Sense of B, B and autonomy. And I'll remember, of course, because I'm the one naming these. Again, and merge those cells so you can take what you need to make your pretty charts. And then let's just uh, okay, let's select that. And let's actually sort this data from by the mean from say sm smallest to largest or largest to smallest, however you like. And I'll say insert some charts. I'll just pick that one and I'll just add those data la labels at the end. And I'll actually just reduce the decimal places as well to make it clearer what's going on. And it seems the highest rated areas are when, when students uh, at my school are having fun, some are left out. Um, that's not usually the case. And so people are, are, are included. Oh, and one thing to keep in mind too is if you reverse code your skills like we did, this was one of the ones that we reverse coded, you'll also wanna change the STEM so that the, you know, the, the question itself so that um, it makes sense. So when the students at school are having fun, no one is left out. It's left out. And now people here are strongly agreeing uh, for the most part uh, or agreeing at, at the very least. And your scale, you'll remember from your survey, it, it, the minimum scale was one and the maximum was five. And so you want to change those minimums and maximums. And then the units was one point um, scales. So uh, the reason I'm, I'm doing this is you, you want them as much as possible for your numbers to make sense, right? And you can even include like a label when you finally put this in a paper or in a PowerPoint, you can say one equals strongly disagree, two equals uh, disagree, three equals neutral, four equals um, I agree, and five equals strongly agree. And that way somebody can see, oh, when this one is 3.6, um, it means that, oh, and I, I thought I edited this, this one here, it seems not to have registered. Yeah, no one is left out. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, so, but people have a way of interpreting what your numbers are actually meaning. So you can either do frequencies or means, uh, that's all, all right, as long as you change your scales to make sense and you, uh, you know, you hopefully provide a legend where people know what one equals and et cetera, et cetera.